Hey, what's up, everybody? NFX here. I hope I have my microphone issues worked out. I hope I have other audio issues worked out and anything else I need to work on. Uh, let me know. Um, I haven't been making videos on the regular for, you could say, for decades. Well, a decade for a long time. Let's put it that way. I make one here or there, but I mean, on the regular, like I don't have an intro. I don't really have a style anymore in terms of, you know, uh, how I present things. So thank you guys for bearing with me. I, I don't want to be, um, I'm not trying to be uh, in the game, as it were. I'm not trying to be uh, what a lot of you give me credit for in the past um, with the tutorials in FL Studio. That's... That's in my past. I'm not, I'm not trying to get back to that. But in my general nature, I like to help people. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm not going to have fancy intros or, or anything like that. I'm just going to start the camera, say what I got to say, hopefully not do too much editing, and give you guys good information. And on that note, um, today I want to talk about making yourself a jam track and why you want to do that. Basically, <clears throat> a jam track to me, the way, the way I utilize it, is a way of practicing without practicing. And I had mentioned in a previous video that, you know, the more you were to practice something, uh, the better you would get at it, which is common knowledge. Um, but think about it in terms of music. Uh, how many people out there, you know, want or like to spend time practicing their scales or learning new chords or new whatever musical information? It's not always the funnest thing to do. So what I try to do at times is make it fun. So let's say, for example, in today's exercise, what, what we're going to try to do is learn how to use the A minor pentatonic scale. It's very easy, um, and hopefully it'll be fun for you if you follow along and maybe use your own sounds and, and inject your own style. What I'm going to show you as a starting basis can go in any direction. It can go into a rock direction, salsa, really, if you wanted it to, hip-hop, pop, R&B. It can go a lot of places with the right background tracks. However mine end up in this example, it's not, that's not what the tutorial is about. It's not trying to make something that sounds like what you're going to hear I make. I want you to pay attention to how I'm going about it and the notes I'm going to tell you about because those are the real important parts of this particular tutorial. So <clears throat> you make a jam track so that you can practice something without it feeling like it's practice. When you go to the gym, when I go to the gym, or in my case, I go down here to the Y. Um, well, technically I haven't gone in a while shut down but it's not fun to sit on those machines and treadmill or or whatever you know lifting weight some people find enjoyment out of it. maybe if you're with your friends and, and it's a, a thing but me I don't it doesn't get me up and moving but if you give me a basketball you guys on the court I can play and get a workout that way put me on a bicycle I'll ride 30 miles, come home, I'll be tired. But I didn't feel like I had a workout. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like work. It just felt like play. So that's kind of what my goal is with jam tracks, what I call jam tracks. But you just make them yourself. And, uh, and so we're going to play in the A minor pentatonic scale today. So to start off, I've got preloaded sounds just to make things quick. Uh, but here I've got a piano, and we're talking A minor pentatonic, so it only makes sense that we would start with 
with an A minor as our first chord, which you see on the screen, and then it goes to an E minor for our second chord. The E being what's called the fifth of the A chord. Um, and you can see how this E, which is the top note of the A chord, becomes the bottom note of the next one. So it's connected, if you will. Additionally, um, the five chord, what they call the five chord, resolves back into the one chord very nicely. So my goal here is that we can use two, co two chords that sound well without having to come up with a fancy chord progression or anything like that. So, so this is what our starting chords sound like. So this could go in a lot of directions already. You might want to do 808. Maybe just some hi-hats. Who knows? But as a bed of sound, that can go all over the place. Um, now we're going to add a few elements to make the background track a little bit more uh, interesting and vibey. So we're going to add a bass line. The bass line is A, E, A, E, pretty much. You see these little notes I've thrown in here. <clears throat> By the way, thank you to those that uh, helped me get my colors straight. Neffers, particularly. Uh, but anyway, I've highlighted kind of the accent notes. So I'm going to mute those. If And then when I play this, you're going to see it's just A and E. So it's exactly the same as the chords, really. But I've thrown a few spicy notes in here. They're not really spicy. They just help lead from the E back into the A, and then there's a little interest there. It's not a big deal, but this is what it sounds like. Okay, so it sounds a little busy in that one section, but trust me, once it's in the mix, it's not going to stick out I don't think uh, guitar part uh, again it's a fairly basic um, this is that guitar plugin I like using but I'm hitting the chord on the ones if you look at the C6 uh, here line this is showing you when I'm strumming the down strum the C sharp six which I've now highlighted those are mutes and then up here these little uh, now highlighted notes those are little picked notes that just I threw in again, to provide a little tiny bit of interest. So this pattern sounds like this. All righty. And finally, the drum track. The drum track, again, is very basic. Um, you're not trying to make any one of these parts that interesting, okay? Uh, these are just all to be background parts. So I've got the kicks here on the ones. I've got the snares here on the twos and fours. And then I've got uh, a combo shaker, tambourine, tambourine type pattern and hi-hats and open hats up at the top. Um, sounds like this. There it is. So very basic, very basic. Um, all together, we'll just take a quick listen. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Um, let's talk about the A. Well, let's let me get my my. Uh, instrument up and ready. Okay, now let's talk about the A minor pentatonic scale. I'm going to bring up a picture. There we go. 
which is showing you the uh, keyboard kind of highlighted with the blue and the letters indicating the note that's in the scale. It's called the A minor pentatonic. I'm not going to go through all the details on how that gets created and named and yada yada, but the pentatonic part simply means that there are five notes that we need to be worried about. In the A minor scale, there are more than five notes. In the A minor pentatonic, there are five notes. There are only the five notes. So even though B is not listed there and F is not listed there, they could technically be in an A minor uh, scale, but we're not focusing on that, okay? So we're, we're, we're dealing with A minor pentatonic. So we have the A, the C, D, and the E. Oh, that's a little too high. Let's bring that down. We have the A, the C, D, and E, the G, and then back into an A. Okay, so that's a repeating pattern. Um, those of you know how the how a keyboard, uh, MIDI keyboard, piano keyboard works, you know that's a repeating pattern. And the way um, I might approach this, by the way, is uh, when you're looking at a MIDI keyboard, um, for me, I, I visualize the good keys, so to speak. Kind of like you can see that picture where the, the quote, the good keys are blue and they even have their little, little, um, letter next to it for the note name i kind of try to look at that and then look at my keyboard and say where are those how are those related yada 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 right and in this case it's it's fairly simple once you recognize how a piano keyboard has a repeating sequence of three and two of the black keys you can see it is two and then three two and then three two and then three two and then three or three and then two, depending on how your keyboard's set up. But the, the, the basic is you have a repeating pattern, two, three, two, three, when it comes to the, the black keys on your keyboard, right? On your piano keyboard. So if you look at that though, anywhere, let's focus on the, the, the A minor pentatonic and we can look at the G and the A, okay? The G and the A fall kind of what you might look at as inside the three pattern. You see what I'm saying? Like there's the three black notes that are together. And then here, one, two, three. But, but what I might say inside of those on the white keys are the G and the A. So now I can look, I can physically look at my uh, MIDI keyboard and I can see with my eyes where the three pattern is. And because I can quickly identify all the three patterns on my keyboard, I know those two notes inside of the three pattern are good. So I can quickly identify those notes up and down the keyboard, easy. Apply that same logic to the C, D, and E. Now, if we look at the C, D, and E, they're kind of patterned around that two uh, black key block, right? So what I can do is my brain will look at that and go, oh, ev everywhere I see that two block of, of the two keys, I can play those th the three keys right below there. So yeah, I'm using my eyes. I, I'm not doing it from any memory of how to place my hands, okay? I'm not that talented. Uh, but I can quickly identify how to, how to hit those notes, okay? Uh, there's only five of them. It's easy. So that's step number one. Now, um, I'm going to hit some random notes uh, while the track is playing. And I'm not trying to play anything impressive. I just want you to hear how the notes don't sound out of key. Okay? So we can at least establish that. We can then riff with these notes. Okay, so all those notes were just up and down, kind of those same notes. A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, 
Ide. Okay. Now, if you take that and just try to imagine patterns, rhythmic patterns, as well as note patterns, but a lot of us are more rhythmic first and then, uh, and then uh, note oriented. And what I mean by that is you might play this, but you're only going to hit the A because that's the root. That's like one of the more, more important notes, right? So that's. So I'm just playing a repeating rhythm. You could change it up. Now, let's say you take that same rhythm, but instead of just playing the A, you throw in another note. But it's the same rhythm, right? So our rhythm reminder is this. Okay, now I'm going to try to just throw in another note in that rhythm, right? So it might be like this. It's just one other note, but the rhythm is the same. But what if we apply that and we find other notes to throw in that are within that, you know, our good notes, the, the A, C, D, E, or G, right? We'll start with the A again. So I played the same rhythmic idea, but I just tried to play different notes in it. And that's really the basis of jamming, if you will, right? Uh, maybe even writing music, that's a melody. But you have to use your imagination. And that's why I say start with something with no notes, just the rhythm. So once you come up with the rhythm, let's change up the rhythm. Yeah. Kind of the same. So you just, I don't know, you just try to sculpt it out from there sort of thing. Let's say you just go crazy. Whatever. My point is, you now will know what notes are there. You come up with a rhythm in your brain, you imagine. Where does it want to go? What does it want to do? And you just take it there and you let it go there and you let your fingers go, right? And you do your thing. Um, now, why I chose A minor pentatonic um, well, I guess a lot of scales, but part of it was because it's the white keys that you can look at and maybe see the pattern, the way I described it, jam out with it. But the other reason is because, let's bring that chart back up. The other reason is because if we look at the notes here, every single note in this, in this scale can be bent, pitch bent into another note that's in the scale. Now, you should be using a two semitone pitch for what I'm talking about. Um, I did a tutorial not that long ago on diagnosing your pitch wheel issues and, and using the pitch wheel, and I cover some of what I'm about to say. Um, but my point today is that with your pitch set up, every note in this scale can be bent into another note in the scale. For example, the A, which is the root note can be bent <clears throat> down into that G. The G 
can be bent up into the A. Obviously, they can bend and come back. I think that's a common thing. Uh, <coughs> C, D, and E. Same basic thing. The C can bend into the D. The E can bend in, down into the D. But the D, right there in the middle, as the D often is, surrounded by, in this case, the C and the E. But you can bend it either way. Or both ways. Anyway, so my point is that this scale is also very uh, pitch wheel friendly. Um, one thing I like to do is hit the note. Wait, like go to the note. Wait, right there, right? That D. And then I'll bend that. Dweep, right? Dweep, 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 right? Uh, my point is they're all easily pitch bendable. So now let's say you have a starting track like this and a MIDI keyboard and a pitch wheel and you maybe set it up with your trap drums and and some nice synth bass that sounds really cool, right? Pad, maybe you have a pad in the background, set some vibe. I don't know. You'll come up with that. But my point is, you'll be able to pretend like you're Scott Storch, banging out some pitch bendy beats, or you can be whoever you want in those moments. But you're going to know what notes to hit. You're going to know, play a rhythmic, repeating rhythmic, thing just and then put those put notes from that scale in there and you'll be able to do something with it and my hope is that you create good music obviously but my hope is also that you become comfortable with that scale with that a minor pentatonic and once you become comfortable with a minor pentatonic what's to stop you from creating a, a jam track in f minor or F major or C major or B flat or whatever. Once you've created your, your backing track, now you're free to explore that scale and learn what it's about and feel what it sounds like and many other things. Okay. So hopefully this is just one way that you can get better at it. Um, you know, I'm not saying this is the best way, the only way. This is how I do it. And that's all I can tell you guys. What I do, what works for me, and maybe it'll work for you. And I hope it does. But until then, um, please have fun. Make music. Make jam tracks. Uh, share what you can. If you guys have any suggestions for me, please let me know what you want to see. And if I, can, if I can show you some way, shape, or form, even if it's not the official way, I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do about it. I, I'm a believer that you don't, you don't need a formal music education to enjoy music. It helps. If you're going to be a professional, it really helps and you should take it that seriously. But if you're like me, you just make music for fun. Um, practicing your scales is probably not something you're going to spend your time doing. But practicing a jam on a scale, hopefully that you'll do. The cool thing about that is when you get pretty decent at it, then you can pretend like you're one of these guys like uh, Mark Rebele or, uh, or Reggie Watts or having trouble thinking. Uh, I think Dub FX is another guy who, who basically they take these loopers, right? They're doing the same thing. The only thing is they're just doing it right in front of you live. They're looping two, two, three, four chords. They're taking a simple bass and just looping that. Then they're able to sing and do, you know, they have talent and skill, obviously. But at the core, they're doing the exact same thing. Okay, exactly the same. So this is how they do it, but they have their own method and they're quicker at it. But you can do it too. And you can practice and you can have fun. You can jam.
Uh, so there it is. Do your thing. Have fun.